Hello friends, welcome to a new 3DS Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgk.com and today we are going to learn more about 3DS Max. This is the second tips video I wanted to add uh, in the, at the end of the uh, modeling with 3DS Max series. In this lesson we are going to go through a couple of things like uh, seeing textures more high quality in uh, the viewport, how I use viewports. Uh, I want to show you how to match the uh, aspect ratio of the reference plane to the object we are uh, modeling. Uh, I want to show you how to change the undo count. And also, lastly, I want to uh, show you how you can lock the render viewport uh, while you are uh, playing with the model in the other viewports. We will talk about this. Now, uh, first thing I want to show you is the texture quality. Uh, to show that to you, I'm going to maximize my perspective viewport and hit F for the front view and just start with a plane. I'm going to use the same uh, reference image we have seen in the previous lesson. Let's just bring this in. Now, first thing here you uh, recognize, maybe, uh, probably this is shown more high quality in your viewport. I've dropped some values to see, uh, show you a more dramatic effect. Uh, but sometimes this uh, you may need this uh, property, so I want to I wanted to show this to you. Now to see this reference image in more uh, high quality uh, resolution, what you need to do is to go to views viewport configuration, and in here you can see that uh, there is a box called viewport images and textures display resolution, and here we have uh, a separate box for the texture maps, and this is a texture map by the way because if you hit M. We don't know this uh, yet, but this is the material editor. And if you uh, pick this material, you will see that uh, there is a material in here. Uh, it's not a corona material, so we, uh, we get this uh, weird error, but uh, for now it's not important. Actually, I can create a corona material for this. But again, uh, we are going to go through these in the uh, final example. By the way, I'm modeling it and it looks great. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than <laughs> what I was uh, I had in mind uh, at the beginning, but whatever. Learning is fun, so uh, I'll make it as long as possible. Don't worry. Okay. Now you can see that this is a material and this is a texture assigned to the base color map, and it shows in here. So this is a texture. Uh, let's go back to that uh, panel, and here we have texture maps. And let's increase this resolution to two thousand, for example, and hit apply and you will instantly see that this image looks much better. Uh, as I told you, maybe in your viewport, or probably in your viewport, uh, it will uh, look something like this, sharper and uh, more high res. But sometimes when you assign uh, really big textures, it uh, max drops them down to, uh, to uh, a thousand resolution, and it looks kind of glitchy. It, you can't really make out what the shape is like. So sometimes you need to use this. Uh, I really recommend you to check this out. Okay, the second thing I want to talk about is the aspect ratio of the reference image. Now, uh, as you can uh, recognize here, it's all stretched out a little bit, right? In the x-axis, it, um, it doesn't look right. It doesn't look the same with this image in here. So if you model from this, then you will have a problem because you won't have a realistic model. So what I want you to do, uh, actually what I do is I bring this into Photoshop first and create a square image out of this. Uh, I, I really think it's very useful to create it like that. Uh, let me show that to you anyways. But the second method I'm going to show you, you won't need to use Photoshop. But whatever, let's do the first thing for uh, at the beginning. I'll bring this into Photoshop. I didn't plan this, so <laughs> my Photoshop is not open. Um, as you can see, I have it in Photoshop. Now, if I click here, click and hold in here, you can see that, by the way, you don't need to use Photoshop, of course, you can use Paint as well, but I really recommend you to buy Photoshop because it's a like a uh, brother pr uh, program, or a brother software to 3ds Max, I get, or 3D modeling, uh, anyways. If you are doing 3D modeling, I guess you should have Photoshop, <laughs> that's my uh, point. Now you can see that this image is uh, 1000, uh, 1800 pixels to 1400 pixels, which is not a square. You can go to image, uh, canvas size and change this. And save this image. 
let's do that. And if you do that, now if you bring this into max, you can see that if I make this uh, plane square, then I, I'm not facing any problems. And this is the method I really use. But if you don't want to do this, if you don't want to uh, make the reference image uh, square, which I really recommend you to do, but whatever, if you don't want to do this, you can just bring this in and set the aspect ratio of this plane to the aspect ratio of this image. To do that, I'm going to right click and go to properties. And here I can see the resolution again. It was 1800 by 1400. Uh, 1400. And let's just uh, set that 140 to 180. Now you can see that the aspect ratio looks right and you can start from modeling in here. The only problem is the, the this is too big, right? If I model it uh, with this, uh, these uh, dimensions, it, the uh, glasses, sunglasses will be um, 180 centimeters long, which is very, very big for a glass. Uh, so what I do uh, after this is I type uh, to Google uh, sun glasses dimensions. I'm going to bring that up. And you can see that we have some dimensions in here. Uh, let's click on some of these. Yeah, here uh, it says 100, uh, 135 uh, millimeters. So I'm going to create a box and I'm going to change uh, the dimension, this dimension to 13.5 uh, because we are using centimeters. And then I'm going to bring this uh, to the origin and then I'm going to scale this down. And you can see that now if I model the glass uh, sunglasses, it will be 135 uh, millimeters long. Okay, so that's the right reference uh, I want to use. Now I can just change the um, layer of this. And I guess I close the layer step one. I, I usually have it open right here, whatever. Uh, let's create a new layer for this called reference. This is what I do. So I, I want to show this to you again. I'm going to right click, go to object properties, just uncheck this show frozen in gray option. And then I'm going to freeze this layer, go to the zero layer and then start modeling. This way you won't have uh, you uh, any problems with the reference image. It won't slip or uh, get bigger or smaller or just go sideways or whatever. Uh, because it's frozen. You won't be able to select it uh, or move it or whatever. Okay. Uh, and uh, next trick I want to show you is uh, the two viewport working method. Uh, now, uh, you should have a tab like this on the side, on the left side, uh, on your 3ds Max viewport. But, uh, but if you don't have it, you, you, what you can do is you can right click and click on this viewport layouts tab. Uh, that's what brings that up. Or it may be floating. Uh, 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 in that case, you can just right click duck left to bring it here. I don't really like to use it like this because it takes a lot of space for just a simple thing that you do once uh, in every uh, scene. So you can just get rid of this by hitting this X sign as well. But for now, let's leave it in here. What I want to show you is you can just click on this arrows uh, button and just choose two uh, viewport layout, which I really like because uh, I uh, generally what I do is I leave one of these viewports as a render viewport. Let's place a camera. If you're using Corona, you can just hit this button in here, which will create a camera from the uh, view angle. Then I can just do my modeling in here. And when I hit render, it should render this viewport. Uh, it, it actually at start it renders the active viewport, but I'm going to show you how you can always render this viewport in a minute. Uh, but this is very cool because let's say I, I want to start modeling this a little bit. I'll go to the front view, just start with this. Drop the segments to one, assign an edit poly on top. And then what I'll do, you will get the idea shortly. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just select this edge, hold shift and just drag another one, drag another one. And this is actually, you can go ahead and model this glass with the, uh, with this method, uh, whatever. And you can see that as I model it from here, it doesn't matter how much I zoom in or uh, which 
way I'm looking at the uh, model, you will always see a final representation in this viewport. So I really like to model things like this. I see how it looks from the front view like this. And you can also change this as well. If, uh, if you want to see a perspective uh, view, for example, you can leave it in here and you can just play everything, uh, play with everything from this viewport. So you won't face uh, the problem of um, not seeing the bigger picture, as you can see. So this is good for modeling and rendering uh, as well. Okay, I really like this two view viewport, but as you can see, there are a lot of different layouts. Uh, just choose one uh, you like and you can just go ahead and play with it. I, I always like this. I can't just work on the other ones, I guess. And something new, uh, something uh, really I, I really liked was uh, right clicking in here and uh, playing with these floating viewports. Uh, I haven't re re realized these were here before. I just uh, upgraded my Max to, to, to uh, 2021. So maybe it's a new thing, I don't know. Uh, but you can just click here and it gives you this floating viewport, uh, which you can again uh, uh, work in or do whatever. And you can just pull this anywhere on the scene, which is very cool. It's a, an unducked viewport from 3ds Max. I really like this. I want to utilize this, but I'll see. <laughs> I guess uh, you can use it in the second viewport. Uh, second monitor, sir. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is how you can render. Um, I'm not going to show you how to render, of course, but how you can render from this viewport always, even if you are activating this one. This is a very cool trick, and I really want to show this to you. Now, first, let's assign a material to this. I'm going to right-click Corona, Corona material, and I'm going to just assign this to here. I will activate my Corona render. Okay, it's already active. And then what I'll do is I'm going to click on this Render Setup button, click on this viewport to make sure it's active. And then I'm going to just click on this lock sign and it will lock this viewport. It, even if you are here, it will render from this viewport. Let me show that to you. Uh, to see something in the scene, I'm going to hit eight and bring this color up a little bit so that I have some light in the scene. And I'm going to hit this real time render button. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you can see that even if I enable this viewport and uh, rotate around this, uh, you can see that it always renders from this view. Uh, I don't want to see the reference image, so let's get rid of that as well. I'm going to just unlock the reference image, right click and close the renderable for this and then lock that again. And you can see that I only see my model. And cool, very cool thing, uh, from Corona is uh, when you're working with Corona is you can leave this open in here. It doesn't take that much uh, computing power if it's not a big scene, of course. Uh, and you can just keep modeling and you can see a real time render in here, which is very cool. Again, wh even while modeling, you want to see how the end thing looks like because you usually have you don't have this type of uh, even this uh, distributed light in the scene, you usually have some light and you that light uh, helps you to see if the surfaces are uh, well built or not. Let me uh, show you what I mean. If I input a light in the scene or create a light in the scene, let's get rid of the background color for this and reactivate this render. You can see that as I play with this light, uh, I have a real time thing uh, showing what's going on. And I can just bring this closer. You can all see that uh, if, and if, let me inf introduce some reflection to the material as well. I know that these are a little bit advanced for now, but uh, I think what uh, you get what I'm doing. You don't need to repeat these. These are just tips and tricks. I, I uh, try to show you uh, what you should, um, repeat after me and uh, so uh, you don't need to create this material or this light anyways but uh, what i was trying to say is let's darken the color a little bit as well i want to see the reflection on the object yeah now you can see that we have a reflection and you can check the surfaces quality with this if there is a weird indent or outdent you will easily catch it with this 
Uh, let's assign a turbo smooth as well. And let's uh, go back to the edit poly. And let's, mess for example, I'm going to bring that in. And you can right away see that there is a weird glitch in here and uh, it shouldn't be there. That's the model. Uh, by the way, we have this weird glitch in here. So you can uh, see how, uh, why this is very useful. And also, uh, you can, uh, for example, you are trying to create an interior scene. You want to put a new armchair, for example, and you want to see how it looks in the final render. You can always see that uh, in this viewport as well. Uh, by the way, one more thing. Uh, one thing that you can do even cooler is you can open this viewport. I usually uh, bring this viewport to my other uh, monitor, but for, for this demonstration purposes, let's keep it in here. Uh, you can maximize this viewport and you have one viewport working for you and you can just see the render on the left side and just work uh, with max in a full, uh, full window style which is very cool because it gets really frustrating when you want to play with some properties you need to bring this to the left when you want to press these buttons you want to bring this up you can't use here it's a little bit weird to use it like this so uh, I really recommend you to get a, a second monitor, even if it's not very high quality. Uh, you should, not should, but it will help you a lot if you have a second monitor. All right, these were the things I wanted to talk about. This was the last tips and tricks video. Now, for the uh, next two videos, we're going to do uh, free plugins and scripts that I use with 3ds Max. Um, then I'm going to do a paid. Uh, plugins and scripts that I use with 3ds Max and then we are going to start creating the interior scene I was talking about. Uh, I'm still working on the scene so I can't uh, show you the render but in the final uh, lesson I'm hoping that I will be able to. Okay, thanks for listening. I hope this was useful. If you find it useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button and see you in the next lesson.